I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 94, PGA European Tour. Released in 1999, this game was developed and published by Infogrames. We're back to the golf course for the second time in this challenge. We've played a more arcade-style golf game in Cyber Tiger, and now this is here to give us a more simulation-type game. Apparently the European Tour is completely separate from the normal PGA, so you won't be seeing Tiger Woods in this game. Compared to the beloved Mario Golf, this sure has a lot to live up to. I personally didn't mind the Tiger Woods EA Sports games back in the day, so I had decent hopes going into this one. Let's get into it. The first thing I did was go to the settings and create my own custom golfer. I thought it was kind of funny how they call the pants trousers. Honestly, there's not much customization here at all, but it's neat the feature exists, I guess. So the main single player mode in this game is the tour mode. We'll need to do that to beat this game. The game's manual has a nice flowchart to explain how to beat this one. You start the tour as an amateur. Here, you'll be given a handicap which needs to be reduced to zero, and you'll need to advance to the top eight. If you do that, you move on to the PGA European Tour Qualifying School. This consists of the top eight players from the Challenge Tour and the bottom eight players from the PGA Tour. If you place in the top eight of this event, then you're officially a PGA Pro. Winning the PGA European Tour from this point will beat the game. I decided to do some practice before actually playing in a match because I literally had no idea what I was doing. The swing meter is in the bottom right. That's pretty intuitive. Just press A to start it, A when it's at the desired power level, and then press A again to line the accuracy up with the line at the bottom. It's very similar to Mario Golf, but the frame rate in this game is abysmal. It makes it so hard to line it up properly. Putting works better mostly because the meter moves much slower. You also don't have to do anything with accuracy, so it's only two A presses. Ah, that's probably enough practice. Now let's play the real thing. The first course is called Quinta do Lago in Portugal. My first shot was a nice little drive, 233 yards right onto the fairway. After shooting, I immediately learned a huge flaw with this game. See, you golf in pairs, and well, the devs decided to force you to watch the other player golfing with you. Every. Single. Shot. Like, sure, you can skip some of it, but no, not all of it. It's so odd to me that you can't just turn off the partner altogether, but you can skip the shot itself. I don't know, I think they should have just had this not exist unless you wanted to have it. So I had a nice go at this first hole and I found myself on the green. It was a long putt for birdie and I just missed it. Putting actually works pretty well in this game, but I didn't understand it fully at this point, so longer putts were quite difficult. One thing I learned is to not trust the suggested shots in this game. You'd think it would give you a decent shot, you know, not the optimal shot because that would be boring. It would just give you a pretty good idea of where to aim for. Jesus! What the heck, man? Well, if you do this when approaching the green, your ball will go flying out of bounds every single time. The bouncing of the ball doesn't hold back at all. It's like the ground is made of rubber. If you go out of bounds, you have to shoot from where you originally were, but you lose two strokes as a penalty. With this, I decided I may as well just start the tournament over. So there's a few different types of shots you can do. A BS lob, high pitch, backspin, normal, topspin, punch, and bump and run. It's weird to me having backspin and topspin as a type of shot because in Mario Golf, it's just like a modifier you put onto your shot. I didn't really make much use of these, as you could usually get the normal shot along with the right club to get the shot to go where you wanted. I think these are just here for a realism aspect. It was here that I realized how to make putting better as well. You can adjust the strength of your putt with a joystick before actually activating the shot. This gives you a much clearer trajectory of how the ball will travel because again, the suggested shot is usually not that great. After you finish each hole, it gives you an update on the standing so you know how well you're doing. In golf, you want the lowest score possible to win. During play, they have advertisements. Well, at least one advertisement. Something called Canal Plus Multimedia. I'm not sure why, because it appears this is some old game dev studio, but they didn't work on this game. It seems really out of place. That's not the only thing that's out of place either. The position of your golfer when hitting off the tee is, uh, it's questionable. Just felt like pointing that out. Another feature of this game is the commentary. 
They had a guy named Peter Alice do it, who I guess is well known for his golf commentary. Well, that's a lovely shot onto the green. I think his lines are pretty decent, but it's annoying how he gives you sass when you mess up. Uh, the drive, what was that, a total mishit? Well, we don't often see drives of that caliber. Darn right. Only when I'm around, because I'm a gamer. I'd like to see him try to shoot in this game. The controls are so annoying. Actually, now looking at his Wikipedia page, he was involved in quite the controversy for his commentary. See, back in 1999, a golfer named John Vandeveld lost an Open where they only needed at least a double bogey 6 on the final hole to win, but got a triple bogey 7. Now here's the controversial part. Alice said the performance was totally ridiculous, and then he was guilty of pure madness. Obviously, the British media accused him of behaving curmudgeonly, which caused him to retort with, certainly wasn't his intention. Man, this guy sounds like trouble. So anyway, I played through 18 holes of golf. They all felt the same to play, but I guess they are different layouts in each. When all was said and done, I was in first place at 6 under par. Apparently, I won 18,000 euros from this tournament as well, which is pretty sick. My handicap was set to zero after this, so now I only had to make sure I finished in the top eight of the league. I honestly don't know what the handicap's even for. I don't think it gives you a boost to your score or anything like that. I don't know, maybe one of you guys know. The next course is Kungsangen in Sweden. Definitely pronounced that correctly. It looks pretty much exactly like the previous course. You know, there's trees, lots of grass, the occasional patch of sand. Speaking of how things look, let's talk about these graphics. Man, they are just bad. I'm sorry, but they're a pain to look at. The character models are pretty poor, and remember, my N64 is HDMI modded, so this is about as good as it gets. There's no music during play, which I guess makes sense for a simulation golf game. I do like the music they play during Mario Golf, though. Um, yeah, but another 18 holes here. There's honestly not really much else to talk about with this game. It was one of the most repetitive, bland experiences I've ever had with a game. It just felt like I was doing the same thing over and over. It's not even that it's a realistic golf game. I played so much Tiger Woods PGA Tour on the Xbox 360. But yeah, after 18 holes and a tiebreaker hole, I took first place in this and earned another 15,000 euros. The third course is K-Club in Ireland. It's another 18 holes, but the layout's obviously quite different, even if it doesn't feel that way at all. I took first place once again and earned 20,500 euros this time. Course 4 is Druid's Glen in Ireland. The name sounds familiar, so I think it's a famous golf course. I was getting pretty fed up with approach shots in the bouncy ground, so I decided to test just how well putting worked. Man, it is so much easier. Look at this massive putt. Get wrecked. From here on out, I just went for putts if I was anywhere near the green. I got first place here once again, and now I was officially in the PGA European Tour. So now the only thing left to do was win the upcoming league and finish the game off. The issue is the schedule. There were seven events remaining, and not only that, they were all two full rounds of golf, with the last being four rounds. Oh my god, so many holes just over and over again. Well, we got a lot of golfing to do. Guess I'll get it over with. After four rounds of match play, I had won the PGA European Tour Championship. My earnings were 1 million euros, which is pretty sick. The game gives you literally no acknowledgement of your victory. No dialogue from the commentator, no congratulations cutscene, not even like an image or just text saying, hey, good job. It's honestly really lame. The credits are just available to view through the options menu. Now, there is one final thing the game offers, cheat codes. These are unlocked as you progress through the tour, but they're all available online. Most of them didn't really seem to do much, but there was one for a pulsating head. And you know, this is a nice twist on the classic big head mode cheat. I'm a fan. 
But yeah, that's about all there is to this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating PGA European Tour Golf. Aw oh, man, I just flat out hated this game. There's not anything good to say about this one, but a lot of bad things. All the golf courses just feel identical to me. Now, maybe that's just because they're real courses and they tried to go for a realistic look, but man, I don't know. There were a total of four of them in all, which is a decent selection. The frame rate's so low, and it makes lining up your shot really hard to do. The graphics are also quite bad. Most of the time you're just sitting there in silence, and I just see zero reason to play this when Mario Golf exists. The only saving grace for this one is the pulsating head cheat. I thought it was pretty funny. I gave it a 1 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty, because getting near the green can be pretty tough. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There are 296 on the list. Could we get a good game? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. 155. What's that? <sighs> so close, man. We are playing Milo's Astro Lanes, which is a bowling game. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.